Now, a large satellite is descending back to Earth today, almost 30 years after it was sent off on its mission. It is expected to come crashing down in an uncontrolled manner, but the European Space Agency says there's almost zero chance it will hurt anyone. Well, to uh, tell us a bit more about that, to reassure us, perhaps Shirley Sitbon is with us. Shirley, explain why we shouldn't be alarmed by this uncontrolled satellite descending back to Earth today. Because it's completely disintegrated. Mm -hmm. It was two tons at the beginning, but it started its uh, descent about, uh, well, in 2011, actually, slowly, gradually, but this accelerated. And now it's supposed to crash to plunge into Earth uh, this afternoon around four, you know, in, in, in two or three hours, four hours tops, and basically just a few pieces still there. But we can see what it looked like on these images. That's the, the model, of course. Uh, it doesn't look like this anymore, mm -hmm. but to, as it descended down to Earth, some other satellites were able to spot it. And we can see one images. I uh, have to tell you, it's very blurry. Okay. Uh, even our friends from uh, the graphics department had to circle this. Other <laughs> pictures are even worse than that. So yeah. it's descending uh, back uh, to Earth this afternoon. And well, it's um, it was very large to begin with. We can see some uh, other images of what disintegrations look like usually. This is these are images from uh, uh, ESA mm -hmm. from other satellites which have descended back into Earth. The first ones filmed from the International Space Station. This is filmed from uh, from actually the Earth, the, the surface of the Earth, and it basically shows you that when a, a large object gets into the atmosphere, the conditions are so extreme. It's so hot and the pressure is so high that it you know it basically burns down or it disintegrates and the pieces are extremely small of course, when it comes down to Earth, it will probably land in the ocean. That's what ESA says. Um, that's what uh, to expect now. It's worth uh, just reminding everybody what it's called. It's called ERS-2, this satellite we're talking about. And it has been up there in space, Shirley, for nearly 30 years now. So what's it been doing this whole time? Yes, many things. Uh, it's basically a pioneer, an ancestor of today's satellites. It started uh, this monitoring of the Earth, of uh, global warming, climate change. And these images are uh, from 1995 when it was launched. Uh, we have uh, these images uh, from the space station uh, with Ariane Espace. Unfortunately, we don't have the actual takeoff of uh, oh. uh, ERS-2. We have the takeoff of ERS-1, which was part of the greater mission. And actually, uh, that satellite, which will be right, which is taking off right now, it was a few years earlier, well, it was not as successful because it never came back to Earth. Uh, they weren't able, you know, that ESA tried, the European Space Agency successfully got uh, ERS-2 uh, back on planet Earth, but it lost contact with ERS-1, so it's going to come back in some one century, perhaps. Mm. It's completely lost, and we can see some images of what it has done all these years. Many things, including uh, calculating, monitoring uh, the, um, you know, the surface of the Earth, the ice cap, uh, disappearing and today's satellites and today's uh, various captors and radars are really inspired by this uh, model uh, which has been used until today was able to detect the changes uh, on the planet and to give us all the data which is so important for us today to, to plan ahead. And as I understand it, Shirley, um, one of the reasons why it's coming back to Earth now is to try and avoid creating more space junk. Yes, and we can see a, a model of that space junk, uh, which was illustrated by the European Space Agency, again, to understand the new programs, mm. because there's such a problem of pollution around the Earth. So many satellites, you can see, uh, and this was uh, a while ago, uh, even uh, two decades ago now, is just, uh, there are so many of them, it can cause, and it has caused, mm. collisions between them. And this can lead to, to accidents in space, to satellites uh, being, uh, you know, no more on, and not operationally more to, you know, it's 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 a great loss. So what uh, ESA uh, is doing with other space agencies is basically trying to get all the satellites gradually back into Earth and clean up uh, the, the space around us, at least not pollute it even more than it is today. And we have some uh, examples of the Japanese space agency, which just this week launched a probe. So at the same time, uh, launched a rocket uh, into space, but... Uh, while it was doing that, while it was launched a satellite, a new one, 
it at the same time launched a probe, which means to aims to clean, to investigate what Japanese uh, satellites are still out there, what can be brought back into Earth. And the idea is to bring them back either with a, with a, you know, an arm or with a net or with some uh, kind of magnets. And the idea is to clean up uh, the, the space around the Earth to avert accidents. All right. Really interesting. Thanks very much. Shirley Sitbon for us there.